From Chandigarh, General B.S. Jaswal, former Army Commander, Northern Command. From Karachi, General Rashid Qureshi, former spokesperson to General President Musharraf. From Delhi, General Bakshi, Editor-in-Chief, Defense and Security. From Islamabad, Arif Chaudhary, Legal Advisor to the Ministry of Interior Government of Pakistan. From Delhi, General Satbir Singh, who is the Vice Chairman of the Indian Ex-Servicemen Movement. From Karachi, also Sayyid Tariq Pirzada, Strategic Affairs Analyst. From Delhi, Colonel Anil Kaul. And I'm also joined from Lahore by Oriya Makbul Jan, who's a columnist. Thank you very much, gentlemen. And thank you for joining me on this very important subject on the news hour tonight. General Rashid Qureshi, here's an opportunity. You want to keep the bitterness of this whole last week back. The opportunity will be for Pakistan perhaps to come clean on the 54 Indian prisoners of war who are believed to be languishing in Pakistani jails. This demand has been officially made by the government of India today. Do you think the government of Pakistan will respond favorably? Jail Quresh. Uh, first of all, uh, what has happened to Sarabjit and in retaliation what the uh, Indian prisoners did to a Pakistani prisoner uh, is something that everyone condemns. I think everyone who's heard this and has information of this has condemned it. So first of all, all unfortunately, this... Uh, a huge issue that is being created by the Indian media and by the Indian government. Uh, not to say that anyone in Pakistan, any sensible person in Pakistan, condones what has happened to Sarabjit Singh. Uh, frankly, seeing over the past 20 years that this person was convicted and was on death row, uh, so stop. I think you should stop calling him innocent. That's one. The second ridiculous uh, demand that you just put forward, that there are 54 Indian prisoners of war yes. of 1971, yes. which is 42 years ago, yes. where India had over 38,000 prisoners of war of Pakistan, Duly which were retain, returned and exchanged. Uh, I cannot believe that the Indian government of that time or the Indian army kept quiet when they did not get their 54 prisoners of war. Now I want to quote here, when we came to Agra and President Musharraf spoke to your delegation and your foreign minister was there also, he said, what ridiculous things do you keep uh, bringing up from Sir. time to time? And I request your delegation, this is what President Musharraf said, yes, yes, to yes. your delegation, yes. that your delegation should come with me to Pakistan, look into I remember jail that we have I in remember. Pakistan, and if they find one Indian prisoner of war that they recognize, and they say that this is an Indian prisoner of war, please take him back. Not one person out of your delegation uttered a word after that. No one came here. They didn't even talk about it again. And now we hear that again we are talking about... Yes, we are. Two or 53 prisoners of war who were supposed to be captured or became prisoners of war 42 years ago. Yes, General, I mean, yes, General Quraysh, and I'll tell you why. Pakistan. I'll tell you why, General Quraysh. I'm, I'm afraid there's a slight time delay between my question and you're hearing it. But let me make the point very clear at the very start as I open up the debate. Sir, with the greatest of respect to President Musharraf, with whom you've worked closely as a military advisor of Pakistan, you will remember, General Quraysh, that after the Agra summit, there was a similar declaration that there are no Indian prisoners of war in captivity. You remember that? He said, I am a soldier. Musharraf said, I am a soldier. I will be the first person to release prisoners of war. There are no prisoners of war. How is it then? that three years later in 2004, your country 
having said there are no prisoners of war release two kargil prisoners of war and i'll tell you their names sipai jagseer singh and mohammad arif in other words your double speak on the issue of prisoners of war has already been proven general qureshi with the greatest of respect and that is why it is difficult to believe what you are saying about the 51 pow's as in who is in india has asked for today you remember the double speak in that case I sir i think you are misinformed i think i think what you are saying is not true nobody was released in 2004 as a prisoner of war and 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 unfortunately if you are calling them prisoners of war they may be people who came across the line of control oh, sir, no no no, no and no 1971 prisoners of war sir. so you are the one who's uh, who are who's utilizing double speak sir. and i think you need to be careful check your facts i'm true on my facts stop these lies sir thank you very much i don't lie and i'm usually almost never wrong on fact the names of the two people are lance naik jagseer singh and sepoy mohammad arif released by the pakistani army to indian authorities as per official release on the 9th of august 2004 at 4:30 pm after languishing in pakistani jails in september 2009 they were two sappers and were part of a task force carrying out the demining operations in the mushko sector west of kargil and at straight across the loc during the kargil war here are the facts sir you can contest these facts but these facts can be corroborated by your own army sir and i'd like now to get in general bakshi on this general bakshi is the issue as dead as general no, qureshi no, no, is making no, no, it out to on. be you have yourself admitted that this happened during the kargil war not Excuse 1971 me. war sir what no no saying? i am I exactly exactly because what i had told you was that when that it was the stated position of the government of pakistan that there were no pow's on kargil later 3 years later these two people were released that's why i presented this as a contradiction sir the question of 1971 pow's is something else general general bakshi just hear the other side sir because today across india people want the 54 pow's back general bakshi is the issue as dead as uh, the respected general qureshi is making it no, out to be arna this is not at all sorry go ahead go ahead i can hear you you know arna this is not at all a dead issue it is a fact of life it is one of the bitterest memories of the 71 war we had 93000 prisoners military and civilian i may correct the figures given out by general qureshi each and every one of them was repatriated that's true and this despite the request from the bangladesh government that 300 of them were acknowledged war criminals who had carried out rape and murder and mass torture on a very absolutely a lackadaisical scale now what i would like to state is that pakistan gave its list in two list of its prisoners taken in the western sector in two batches there were a number of names which were announced by radio pakistan yes. as captured and i would especially like to tell you of wing commander uh, uh, varech and another uh, uh, flight lieutenant goswami their capture had been mentioned on television uh, sorry on the radios of pakistan they were announced there were fighter pilots who had been shot down over pakistan out of these 54 fighter pilots almost all of them the bulk of them were officers who could have information and as such it was these people who were held back to be tortured to extract the information from them pakistan wanted to utilize this facility even after that war was over so even when we returned their prisoners they have not and there have been enough sightings of these prisoners chuck yager the american air force chief of staff he mentioned this fact in his memoir that he had been told about these prisoners by the pakistanis themselves there are there is enough corroboratory evidence i can cite that evidence of the sightings of these by our people who have returned from pakistani jails i think it is one of the most inhuman things that they could ever have done it is of a piece with this country's otherwise sick and psychotic behavior one second now now well, let's get a response please from karachi i go back to sayed pai tariq pirzada sayed tariq pirzada some facts have been presented by general bakshi regarding the 54 pow's and now i like i like to also welcome into this discussion damanti lambe whose wife of uh, flight lieutenant wasant 
Tambe. Damayanti Tambe is wife of Flight Lieutenant Vasant V. V. Tambe, and she last saw her husband in December 1971. And after that, there has been enough evidence which has also gone on to suggest that Flight Lieutenant Vivi Tambe is very much there in uh, Pakistan. But before I go across to you, ma'am, I'd like to go to Sayyid Tariq Pirsada. Sir, do you have a counter to the very specific points that have been made there? In fact, I would like to share with you that he mentions the name of several people. I have the exact time down to the minute when Radio Lahore and Radio Pakistan made these announcements about about catching or capturing the Indian soldiers, who you now deny ever exist with you. Arnab, first of all, you have a major problem at hand. You are a good case of self-contradiction in, in, uh, in, in stating the facts. Number one, you said that you were talking about, you were talking about the prisoners of war of 1971. Yes. Number two, just yesterday, uh, rather this morning, a Pakistani prisoner was attacked in retaliation, and you have started the conversation about prisoners of war to help uh, to uh, uh, to uh, cover this issue. Of a deliberate attack. I am extremely on a sorry, Sayyid Tariq Mirzada. I would Try like to, to I would like to, I would like to please, please most humbly tell you that right at the start of this program, I'd like to just humbly state to you, sir, that at the start of the program, at the start of the program, Sayyid Tariq Mirzada, I have said, I have said that the attack in Jammu was shameful. You just jumped back no, no. to the Kargil war, and that's your contradiction. So your facts are always wrong. Sir, you so are... Uh, logic. Sir, the, may I please, Sayyid Tariq Pirzada, make two very factual points to you. The first point is this, that in the first sentence on the news hour tonight, I said that what has happened in the Jammu jail is unacceptable. The second was made as a case in point. You have been making a One minute. The second was made as a case in point world. that after... Kargil, there was a stated position of the Pakistan government that there are no POWs in our captivity. Three years later, Pakistan released two, three POWs. So in other case, I presented the Kargil case to prove to you that as far as POWs are concerned, there is duplicity. May I please request you, Sayyid Tariq Pirzada, instead of attacking me, could you counter the very specific points made by General Bakshi at the start of this discussion? I think General Bakshi is too much overwhelmed by the emotions on the issue of Sarabjit Singh. He is cooking up all the facts. He is not being responsible in stating uh, the situation either in uh, that belongs to 1971 or the Kargil War. Remember the Kargil War. Remember that Su-27 pilot who was captured in Pakistan after the plane was down and he was returned honorably. You don't return, remember the graceful gestures. What you remember is a venom that no, you I remember. in your own heart. I remember what your former prime minister, who you executed, said. If you remember, sir, a book published in 1980, since you don't trust what I say, it was titled Bhutto Trial and Execution. It was written by Victoria Schofield, a senior BBC London reporter. Page number 59 of this book reads, Bhutto's cell separated from a barrack area by a 10-foot high wall did not prevent him from hearing horrific shrieks and screams at midnight on the other side of the wall when detailed inquiries were made by Bhutto's lawyers. It was ascertained that the people who were screaming there were Indian prisoners of war who had been rendered delinquent and mental during the course of the 1971 war. Fifty odd of them were lodged in the ward next to mine. Their shrieks and screams in the dead of the night are something I will not forget. This is written, sir. If you don't believe me, would you also say that you don't even believe your own executed former president, former Prime Minister Zulfikar Ali Bhutto? I'd like to now go across. At this point, to General B.S. Jaswal. General B.S. Jaswal, are we fighting a lost case as far as the POWs are concerned with Pakistan? Uh, I quoted Bhutto. By Victoria, 
and being narrated by you, that's a whole lot of a truth. I don't think any sane person would believe so it. So anything that, which one. doesn't agree number with you, two, you are dismissing? Come back to 